Hi, hobbyists. Brennan here with Privateer Press. Today, we're going to turn the hides of battle by quickly painting up some leather. So let's get started. So we have here one of the Northkin Raider models. Um, I've already went ahead and base coated with Guncore Brown the sections that I'll be painting up today. So first, we're going to want to shade with Battlefield Brown. So I'm going to go ahead and shake up a bottle and go ahead and just load up some. I'm going to put a little bit more than I normally would using a very old, crusty brush. So don't worry about getting paint all over it. Now I'm gonna mix up more than I normally would for one layer just because I'll be mixing into this later with another color. Add a little bit of water. So I'm gonna do some fast two brush blending to get these on there. You can use whatever layering method you like. So I'm okay with being pretty messy. So I like speed over accuracy sometimes. Since this is leather, it's okay if you have some texture and you're not perfectly smooth. It lets you work fast just because of the, the worn light nature of leather usually. It has a lot of texture in it. So a smooth blend just looks unnatural. Let's go ahead and pull some of that in there. Try to get it in the recesses. Get those shadows in there. I'm gonna go ahead and load this area. Let's go deep in there. Shadow around the edge down here. Sweep it around. All right, and then for up here, I'm gonna go ahead and just sweep the back of her and just pull it around, get those shades in there. Again, I'm not worried about being perfectly smooth just because it's leather, so it's very textury in nature. So it allows being messy, helps with a convincing effect. All right, my first shade is done. While that's drying, I'm gonna go ahead and mix up my second shade. So going back to the Battlefield Brown, I'm gonna go ahead and mix up some Exile Blue. This is a really nice color to add in the Battlefield Brown. So depending how much blue you add, you can keep the, the mix on the brown tint, or you can mix a lot of the Exile Blue to push it towards a dirty, nice shade for an actual blue. Since I'm already brown, I'm gonna keep it towards the brown spectrum. So I'm gonna darken it up as you can see. And that looks about nice. If I add too much more, it'll push it towards the side of the value of blue. So I'm good right there. All right, I'm not gonna add any more water because it, it's plenty wet enough. I'm gonna go ahead and start applying my second layer of shading. I wanna make sure that I don't overlap what the previous shade level and push into the gun core brown. So I wanna make sure that I'm blending into the battlefield brown as much as possible and you're not going from this new mix directly into the gun core brown. It's all right to happen sometimes depending on the layer of shading you're going for. But you can always break rules until you learn them. So when we do our glaze, one nice uh, effect is that it's going to help blend the transition. So if you're really scratchy or it ends up looking really dirty, just apply a glaze, which I'm already, since I'm already planning on it, I'm keeping that in mind, so I'm not worried about things being too inaccurate, because I know that my next couple steps will end up fixing that. Go ahead and apply some to our bandana up here. And then add a little bit of shade right here. And once that's dry, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of Thamar Black to this previous shade. Since that leather has so many folds and crevices, I'm gonna go ahead and just darken this up. So there's just so much in this mix, just a kind of shortcut. I'm just gonna put a little bit over here so I can get that shaded down a lot quicker, the new mix. And a little bit of water. This is a really dark shade. This is a color I would use for my dark lining as well. So I'm just going to kind of line underneath these crevices and folds. Provide some contrast and deep, deep shadows. I'm just gonna go ahead and fill in these scratches and it's gonna provide the dark shade for the recess of it. So it'll highlight it out and give it more contrast so they pop a little bit more. And I just need to do the folds in her bandana. All right, so the next step is to do some reclaiming. I'm going back to my base color with Guncore Brown for the reclaim stage. I'm gonna be using this for my first highlight after I reclaim. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a little bit into my pot here my well palette. 
So reclaiming is just using the base color to just go back over areas that you might have went too heavy with on the shade. Um, since leather is quite textured, I'm also going to use it to just make sure I get some texture in there. I'm just going to paint streak lines. So scratch a little bit. So I'm going to just use some little nicks here to try and texturize some of this leather. And some of these folds here. All right. So now that I've reclaimed and I've done all my shading, I'm going to go and do my first highlight. And I'm going to do that by just adding some Rucksack Tan to my Guncore Brown. This is going to shift the color, but it's not going to do too much for the value, the brightness of the color, that is. You can see that it's tinting a little bit towards yellow, which is what I want. The reason why I'm doing this is because is the yellow will help make the leather look more tattered and worn um, and ragged. Like it's been through some, been out in the weather for a little while. It also makes it a little more dynamic and contrasty. It's fine being messy and sloppy because, again, it just adds to the textured appeal. See me just doing all these light dings as a highlight. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight some of these tattered parts of the leather here. So with a dark line in the recess, and then this kind of ding to highlight it really helps showcase it a little bit. Got that over here, do the side over here a little bit. Doesn't need to be anything extravagant. All right, and now all I gotta do is the bandana here. I'll be doing the same thing I did in the reclaim stage, highlighting the edge of these folds here. I'm being kind of scratchy with my brush because I wanted to have some texture. All right, so next we're gonna highlight the last highlight layer with Hammerfall Khaki. And this is going to be the extreme worn nature color for the leather here. This is gonna be the last highlight we'll be applying. So I'm gonna do the same thing I've been doing with the highlight layers. Scratchiness here and there. And dry brushing would work fine as well. It gives it that textured look. If you like to dry brush, or you're just cutting for some time. So normally on leather, how bright your uh, highlights are versus how dark your shades are um, depends on how reflective you want your leather to be. So shifting it towards the yellow and the Hammerfall khaki for my highlights allows me to use highlight layers as normal but it also makes it look more worn, and worn uh, leather gets more worn when it folds. So it allows you to create that dynamic color shift without necessarily making it look more reflective, which helps pop it on the table, make it more contrast. So there we go. And that's pretty much all we need for some nice neutral leather. But I'm gonna go ahead and do some glazes to shift the color towards different spectrums and give it different values and show you how easy it is to provide some color contrast on your leathers, even though you painted it all up at once. And this applies to any material. So I'm gonna go ahead and use some brown ink, and I'm gonna water it down a little bit. Now, how much you wanna water it down is gonna depend on how used to glazes you are. Because the, the more watered down an ink is, the more translucent it's going to be, it, which means you'll have to apply more layers, but you'll have more control over it and how, how dynamic the shift is and how quickly it goes that way. So I am pretty heavy here, um, but I prefer to do it quickly, <laughs> so. I'm only gonna go with one glaze, more than likely. We'll see how this turns out. So I'm gonna apply this to the leather on the chest here. I'm gonna apply it just like I would any paint, um, but you can see that it kinda has the consistency of a wash, um, which is, it's pretty close to it. I just don't want it to run anywhere. I just want it to graze over top, and you can see as it tints the color and shifts everything towards the red of the spectrum of the brown ink. And I can make this less dynamic by just watering down the brown ink more um, if I, it was watered down more, I could apply it multiple times to still shift it to the same values here. So you see it's building up here. I'm going to wipe that away because I don't want, because it's not a wash. I don't want it to pool. I want to have complete control over it. So uh, on a wash, you're going to apply it and you want it to seep into the recesses. On a glaze, which is pretty much the same type of paint consistency, I want to apply it over the entire surface of a section but I don't want it to be runny. And you can see how it applies pretty much the same way, but it tints the color. So once that's dry, I'm gonna go ahead and do it one more time on the same section, just to show you how it shifts the color and it continues to do so as I apply the paint. So now it's going real brown ink red here. Now this step isn't necessary, but the more you apply the glaze, the more it's going to shift the colors that you're glazing on top of. So you're just trying to get a feel for what color you wanna to work towards and then you just stop whenever you're satisfied. 
And once that's dry, you can see how we have two very distinct different colors now, even though our base colors and shades and highlights were all the same originally. We have this one down here, and also up here, and then we have the glaze material right there. We're gonna do one more glaze, and this time we're gonna focus on the bandana. So for the next glaze, I'm gonna use a, an actual paint and not an ink, and I'm gonna use Battle Dress Green. So to make a glaze out of this, I'm just gonna add some from my hair into my pot. And the only real process is to water it down. So it's gonna be a lot thinner than an actual application of paint if I was trying to apply it as a layer. So it's not runny, but it's translucent, and that's exactly what I'm going for. Because I just wanted to apply it just like I did the ink glaze. So for here, I'm just going to paint it on top of this leather. So this is a subtle shift, but that's usually what you want from your glazes. You can always just add more layers as you go. So now, I'm gonna use a little bit more and this time I'm just gonna pick and choose where it goes, just like an actual layer of paint. I'm not gonna go in the deep shadows, so I don't wanna lose all the contrast that I painted previously. So you can definitely see how it tints towards green. So from starting from the same leather base, we easily have three different colors just with a couple applications of glazes. I'm really happy with the way this turned out. And there you go, a simple technique for painting different types of leather. Join me next time when I show you how to get your hands dirty painting some old greasy metal. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more videos and check out the links in the description below for more in this series and additional information on the P3 Hobby Line. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more videos and check out the links in the description below <laughs> for more in this series. <laughs> I got confused on how to point. They didn't say pointing was a part of the job description. I didn't.